Today is the 7th of February, 2011. We are at the American Legion Post in Margaretville, New York. My name is Wayne Clark. I'm with the New York State Military Museum out of Saratoga Springs, New York. Sir, for the record, would you please state your, your name and date and place of birth, please? Martin Hartman. <clears throat> uh, what else? Uh, your date and place of birth? 10, 17, 21, Brooklyn, New York. Did you uh, attend school in Brooklyn? At the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And then I, after the war, I got my diploma in Roxbury. Okay. Do you remember uh, where you were when you heard about the attack on Pearl Harbor? Yes. Kate in a uh, Park Circle bar mm -hmm. in Brooklyn. Okay. And we were drinking at the bar, and we all went down tried to enlist that night. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't take it. <laughs> I ah. drank too much. <laughs> so you actually enlisted in the Army? No, I was drafted. You were drafted? I didn't go back again. Okay. So they drafted me when I was 21. All right. Now, <clears throat> what were you doing for a living prior to being, being drafted? I drove a truck for Pilgrim Laundry in Brooklyn, and mm -hmm. I also cooked for German delicatessen in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And that was my year as far as working. That was the only two people I worked for before the service. Okay. And uh, you said you were drafted. Yes. And what was the date that you were drafted? Oh, August, or approximately. August 15th, 1942. Okay. And you went into the Army? Went to the Army Air Corps. The Army Air Corps. Now, <clears throat> where did you go for your basic training? Basic training, and now we went to Atlantic City, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And we slept in a hotel for three months. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, they, so how was the training? The training, we cook school, was all right. I feel I forgot more what I knew uh -huh. after I got done with you. And we were feeding 3,000 men at a meal. So, so you, were, you were going to cook school during basic or after basic? That was my basic. Oh, I see. That was my basic cook school. Okay. And uh, we fed 3,000 men a meal down in Atlantic City mm -hmm. while we were at Lawrence. Did you enjoy doing that? It was all right. I didn't mind it because I liked cooking. Mm -hmm. So it didn't bother me any. Well, once you completed uh, your basic in the cook school, where we, did they send you next? We were sent to uh, Las Vegas, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And it was on top of some mountain where you could just about breathe, and we hated it. And my two buddies and I, we wanted to get out of there, so they put up a list for volunteers one day, and we all signed it, and that was it. We ended up in Wisconsin in an Arctic search and rescue outfit. And what did they have you doing there? Learn to ski, drive dog teams, climb mountains. Hmm. Uh, and then from there we were transferred to uh, Houghton, Maine for a year. And that's where we climbed Mount Katahdin, Maine, it's the third highest mountain in the United States. Mm -hmm. We stayed on top of the mountain for a month, just survival food. Mm -hmm. And we trained ten pilots while we were up there. If they got shot down in the yard, they didn't know what to do. Now, now how, ma how many of you were, were in that unit? Oh, I'd say about 30 of us. And you were stationed in Holton, Maine? In Holton, Maine. We did nothing but train. We uh -huh. didn't know any other jobs. We didn't do labor of any type. No KP or nothing. We had people that filled in for us. Now, I, I'm well aware of, I've been to Holton, Maine many, You've many times. Holton? So there's not a lot to do in Holton, Maine. What, no. did, what did you do for entertainment? Well, uh, we happened to meet a couple. My two buddies and I, we met these, this couple. One of them was a civilian cook. Mm -hmm. And we uh, became very friendly. And she did all our laundry for us, had us down there, and we partied down there with them people. Mm -hmm. And I went back and visited them twice after the war. They were like family to me. Uh -huh. But. Uh, they both died, unfortunately, yeah. and never went back there again. Do you recall their names? Pardon me? Do you recall their last name? 
Yeah, Fields, uh, Hazel and Ed Fields. Okay. Um, Holton. And Holton. Their children still live there. I still communicate with mm -hmm. the children. I had family in Bridgewater, which wasn't too far from Holton. Bridgewater? Yeah. You know, Holton used to be a dry town. Mm -hmm. And they, we'd go over the border to Canada. And it was a store there, and they just sold beer. Uh -huh. So we'd buy the beer and come back and have a party. <laughs> okay. Now, after Holton, where, where did you end up next? Uh, Alfred broke up after the Russians joined us. Uh -huh. The reason we were in that with Alfred is the Russians, they were afraid we'd come across, then they damn near touched us up in the yard. Mm -hmm. So we were trained for that. But the Russians joined us again, they stopped fighting with the German, and they joined the Americans. So our Alfred broke up, and we went to Syracuse, New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, we stayed there for a whole couple of months. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had an argument with a 90-day wonder. And I ended up the next day going to Texas to parachute school. <laughs> <laughs> now, was this uh, the best, best thing that he ever did? Because three months later, they transferred them all to the infantry, ah. the whole field. <laughs> now, you said you went to parachute school. Did you go to jump school or rigor school? Riggers. <clears throat> okay. You had to learn how to sew the panels into the, if they were blowing the panels in a chute, mm -hmm. you had to learn how to sew them in there, take the other ones out and sew them in. Now this was done with a, a regular sewing machine? Yeah, very well, a big 9710 sewing machine, I think it was, and a regular sewing machine. Mm -hmm. You had to fit harnesses on people, you had to sew them in the right size because otherwise they'd slip out. Mm -hmm. And we had to check them, go down on the fields and check the uh, shoots that were in a plane because sometimes they inject them with acid the uh, other people that were against us. Really? Yeah. And they'd wow. Just take a needle and sometimes we'd open a shoot up and then panels would be all rotted. Oh my goodness. Now, uh, <clears throat> how long was that uh, uh, school? rigor school? Sixty years ago, <laughs> uh, approximately, was it a couple months or? Oh yeah, yeah. I'd say it was two to three months. Now, uh, while you were doing that, did you get any kind of jump training? No, not a. Well, yes, we did for one day. They had ch t taught us how to roll and fall and land. Well, but you didn't actually jump out of an airplane at that point. No, when we graduated, the day we graduated, we packed our own shoes. Yep. And we sit, fit ourselves, and they told us, you're jumping them today. Mm -hmm. We didn't know about it. One kid refused. Huh. He refused and said, yeah, I'm not going to go. And what happened to him? They locked him up. <laughs> ah. Now, um, <clears throat> being that you didn't go to a standard type jump school like Fort Benning or, yeah, no. or one of those places, were, were you considered jump qualified? Did you get the, to where the parachutist wings? Well, I was qualified, but uh, not to be with the 82nd Airborne or anything mm -hmm. like that. We, were, we knew how to jump. Right, but were you issued the jump wings? No. You weren't? No, no. We, the only other time I jumped again was over in India. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was just a demonstration for some people. How, how many uh, uh, total jumps did you make? Two. Just two. two? That was enough. Yeah. Now, <laughs> when you jumped, did you jump with uh, the static line the or static free fall? Line, yeah, they didn't trust us to pull a cord out, so we used a static line. Uh -huh. oh, of course, uh, if you didn't pull it, you went right down fast. Yeah. Now, did you, uh, when you jumped, did you have a, a reserve chute also? Yes, you had the English chest chute. Uh -huh. And that, all you had to do was hit it. And it would open up, but you had to put your hands over your face because the shroud lines would come up and cut your face. Oh, I see. So nobody wanted to use them, but mm -hmm. they were an emergency shoot. Mm -hmm. So you ended up uh, being sent to uh, China, Burma, India, yeah. CBI. When, when did that happen? Oh, God. Was that like 1944? 44, or? yeah. In 44, sometime we were got on a ship in North California, mm -hmm. 
and ended up in India 30 days later. Now, did you stop along the way any place? We stopped once, yeah, for three days to refuel and put that food in Hobart, Tasmania. Okay. It's a small island south of uh, Australia. Mm -hmm. And very nice people. They were wonderful to us. Really good. Uh, what was it like uh, aboard ship for you? Did you get seasick at all? No, I didn't get seasick, but I was in the bottom hole. So I volunteered for guard duty on top mm -hmm. because I didn't want to be down the hole if somebody hit. Yeah. If we got a hit. Now, did you uh, travel in convoy or just a single ship? It was in a convoy, mm -hmm. and it took us 30 days to get Calcutta, I think it was, India. Mm -hmm. From there, we went to Chittagong, India. It's now part of Pakistan, I believe. Mm -hmm. And we stayed there for a few months. And then they... Uh, no, no, you were on a, a Army Air Force uh, base. Yeah, on the Air Force. Uh, what, what, kind of, what kind of planes were, were they flying out of there? Well, uh, they were flying mostly cargo out of there. Mm -hmm. We had uh, some of the P-41s come in for repairs once in a while. That was, we later found out was a uh, flying tiger. Mm -hmm. They come in for repairs or something. What, what was uh, life like for you? What, what did your day consist of? What did I what? What did your day consist of? Uh, I mean, you pack, you I pack parachute. Movies. That was it. Okay, so you didn't have a, a lot to do. No, you didn't gonna go to Chittagong town because Chittagong was supposed to be the most diseased place in the world. Mm -hmm. So I never hit the town. Mm -hmm. I hit it once when I went there for ice. But that was it. Okay. But. Uh, after we got done there, the training. Let me just ask you, what, what was your living quarters like? What were you in? Oh, we had bashers, uh, bamboo huts. Okay. Which uh, were nice huts, they were long huts, all made out of bamboo. No screens, no doors. Mm -hmm. They had the place for the windows, but that was it. Any problems with, like, snakes or anything like that? Uh, not snakes, what was it? Uh, coyote, not coyotes. Oh, some other one, similar to coyotes and animals. No. Like a fox, something like that. They okay. Around. But otherwise, well, uh, mongoose. Mm -hmm. We had mongoose. I had a mongoose for the king cobras. They hated the king cobras. Uh -huh. And I had it tied to my bunk. And people would come and get it when they spotted a cobra, and they'd bring it up there and let the mongoose loose. And he would circle that cobra. It was so cold with them, they're dizzy, you know. For hours, two hours would be nothing from the circle, and all of a sudden they hit them, mm -hmm. and that was it. Hmm. Kill them. But uh, they, we, we started, uh, they broke our outfit up. We had to pack up uh -huh. and leave. We left them, we drove onto the Burma Road. We left from Lido, England, India. Yeah. And uh, landed in uh, Luchao, China. Now, did you fly or you drove the... We drove the whole... The, the whole Burma, Burma road. road. Yeah, that was built by General Stillwell. What was the road like? Was it was Horrible. it pretty rough? It's a dirt road. Mm -hmm. We lost one vehicle, a fire engine. And believe me, with the dual wheels, we were just about on the ground. When we, that's how narrow it was. Mm -hmm. And did he go, did the fire truck go over a cliff or? Yeah, you go over the cliff and bite down. See? And the Chinese people were not the best drivers in the world. Uh -huh. And they, you could only one pass. You did, at a time, you'd had to pull over to the side of the mountain, let them pass. But they actually uh, barrel died past you. They didn't have no sense on the speed. Yeah. So we got to Luch out China. That was where uh, General Chenault and those flying tires had flown at him. Mm -hmm. But they had left quite a while before because the Japs had surrounded the place, so Chenault flew them all out and, and burned the place before he okay. left. So you didn't take over their barracks or anything? There was no barracks left. We had tents. Oh, I see. Everything was burned. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing that was left was the mess hall. So, so we stayed there and we. 
Fort Ogg, uh, not us, but the Air Force, the pilots and all, their job was to train, to take the Chinese soldiers and transport them, transport them back to Taiwan. Because General Chenault wanted them back there. Because the, the local Chinese soldiers would kill them, the communists. Uh -huh. They would find them and kill them. But uh, it went on for quite a while. But we transported quite a, we didn't do it. The C-47 pilot, they would take a load back and forth all the time to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when that was over, we got them all out of there, we were shipped to Shanghai. How did you get to Shanghai? We flew. You flew? Flew in to Shanghai. We were there. We were the second group there. The day before the other group got there, they had released, uh, I think it was General Doolittle's pilots. Mm -hmm. They had been in the prison there and they rescued them out of that prison. And uh, the war was over. Okay. And the Cold War started. We were now let me just go back a little bit. <clears throat> were you ever under attack by the Japanese? Yeah, well, we drove the Burma Road. We were attacked. But we were ordered not to shoot back because the war was over. Oh, how were you attacked? By uh, ambushes? They were, or? they were in the woods, uh, the forest, and they shot at us. We were driving along the road. And they started shooting at them. But you couldn't shoot back at them? They told us not to shoot back. But a couple of bullets went back that way. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, that, they didn't know it was over. They had no communication yeah. with Japan. <coughs> Japan was almost demolished, yeah. the A-bomb. So they had no, no way of knowing that the war was over. So they shot at us. We didn't shoot that many back, you know. Okay. So then we went on, like I said, we left a lot of equipment there, they burned it. So the Japs couldn't get it, the Chinese nationals couldn't get it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we stayed there, I stayed there until, oh gosh, must have been four, five months, yep. until December 45. And then we, I took a boat back home to California. Mm -hmm. In about five, oh, more than five years, uh, I was on the police department at the time. So, so you were discharged in California? No, I went back to Fort Dix to be discharged. Oh, Fort Dix, okay. Because I lived in Long Beach. I, my wife had moved to Long Beach. Okay. So I went to Fort Dix and they discharged us there. About. And I stayed there and worked around, and I went on the police department. And so I got a notice by from another cop that told me that he was in the CBI. He said General Chenault had issued a Chinese Chenault victory medal for the guys that were there. Mm -hmm. All I had to do was write to the council in New York City and yep. give them the time, and I was sent the medal. The General Chenault victory medal. Oh. But that was it. Uh, and I stayed on for the rest of the 20 years and got off the police department and came up state here. You retired from yeah. the police? Mm -hmm. New York City Police? Nassau County. Nassau County. I've been retired 41 years. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> they got a contract out of me, I think. <laughs> uh, now, uh, did you. Uh, did you join any veterans organizations? Yeah, I joined the New York uh, Nassau County Police Legion, mm -hmm. and then I transferred from that to the Roxbury. Okay. Legion when I moved up here. Okay. So are you a member of the VFW or the American no, I, Legion? We started that, but we tried to start one in Roxbury, and I was supposed to take over it, but it just never floated, you know. Okay. They just forgot about it. Okay. I keep getting letters from the VFW up in Stanford, but I don't know how to drop my name. I'm not a member. I know. Okay. The only thing my member is Roxbury Legion. Now, did you stay in contact with any of the guys you were in the service with? Yes. The, well, Joe Messina, the baker, he lived in Cleveland. I 
contacted him for quite a few years and he died. And then Ralph Webb, a buddy of mine from India, he died. He was from Carlisle, PA. Mm -hmm. And then Bill Foster. And he was a shop chief. I was the assistant shop chief. He stayed in the Army and became sergeant of the Air Force. Oh. He looked like a zebra when he got done putting stripes on him. Uh -huh. And uh, we met again in Georgia. They had a convention. And then that year he died. Oh. So are, are, you, are you a member of the uh, China Burma India Association? Uh, I was. That's the uh, basher. They call that the basher. Okay. I joined that down, the one down in Kingston. But I had to drive at night, mm -hmm. and it was too much for me to drive at okay. night. I, mean, I don't drive at night at all. Okay. So I just dropped out of it. How do you think your time in the service changed or affected your life? How did the what? How do, how do you think the uh, time in the service changed or affected your life? I'd be a better person, I think. Mm -hmm. I loved it. I, I want to stay in. My wife would love me. <laughs> she said, you stay in, you stay there. <laughs> now, now, were you married when you went into the service? No. no? I got hurt my leg on a physical fitness test up in Holton, Maine, uh -huh. running. You ran from one side of the hangar to the other and hit the door and turned around. Well, I hit the door with the one foot, and this foot didn't turn. Uh -huh. So I ended up with call it a football knee, knee or something, severe contusion or something in the yep. left knee. I still got the pump on the top of the knee. Hmm. But then I tried to get my records. My records were burned out in the West. Yeah. But they said they had a, found them finally. Some young lady had taken the quotas on people that have hurt, not shot or anything like that, but just hurt in the service. Yep. And they found them in her records. Oh. On that. But up to the. That's the only time I heard I ever got was in the Mindy, and I was damn glad for that. Okay. <laughs> so so you, didn't, you didn't have malaria or dengue fever or any uh, of that? I had a touch of malaria on the part of my heart, but it, was, it wasn't that bad. We had had a, had a burn. Okay. I took that and it cured it. I never had any results of it coming back. Okay. Now you brought some photographs with you. Yeah. Okay. If you hold them up just right in front of you, I can zoom right in on them with the camera. Okay. Now, the one in the park, uh, when and where was that taken? Was that taken that in Holton? Holton, Maine, yeah. Okay. Well, I was in the yardage search room last year, Alfred. Okay. And then the other uh, one where you're in the dress uniform. Parachute rigger in uh, No Model Field, Texas. Okay. So you were a technical corporal? In the beginning, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. What rank were you when you were discharged? Sergeant. Sergeant? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do you have anything else? No, I told you about the, the medal from Shanghai Shack. I tried to write down stuff last night while I was watching them football game. Ah. But it didn't work out. Burma <laughs> Road. Um, we stayed a month on top of Mount Katahdin, Maine. I think I mentioned mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Flying tires. Oh, I think that really got most of it. Okay. On that. All right. Well, thank you so much for your interview. Okay.